I would now like to talk to you about bowel volvulus. This is an important diagnosis to make radiographically as it is often a surgical emergency or surgical urgency. Volvulus is an obstruction caused by twisting of a bowel loop. Patients present with abdominal pain, often cramping in nature, nausea, and vomiting. Prompt diagnosis is necessary to avoid the complication of bowel wall ischemia and catastrophic bowel infarction. Volvulus can involve the stomach, small intestine, and colon. Uh, in this talk, we'll concentrate predominantly on colon findings. And as in many things that present with acute abdominal pain in the emergency room, computed tomography is the mainstay of diagnosis. Initial imaging is often conventional radiographs, which can provide some findings suggesting volvulus that typically requires additional imaging, usually CT scan to make a definitive diagnosis. Uh, we'll start off talking about sigmoid volvulus. There are three radiographic signs that can indicate uh, this finding. One is called the coffee bean sign due to the shape of the bowel. I have an example in a subsequent slide. You will see absence of gas within the rectum. And the northern exposure sign, which I will have an example of, which is a dilated loop of sigmoid colon that extends into the upper abdomen, typically above the transverse colon. Now we have an AP abdominal radiograph of a patient in the emergency room with abdominal pain. As you can see centrally in the lower abdominal radiograph, there is a dilated loop of bowel arising from the pelvis. This is a typical location for a sigmoid colon. And as you can see, this dilated loop of bowel has an inverted U shape, and there is a central um, opacity that is caused by the two opposed walls of the sigmoid colon. Uh, this is called the coffee bean sign, as uh, some uh, radiologists thought this uh, looked like a coffee bean. I have a picture of a coffee bean for uh, comparison, and you can see the uh, resemblance. This is another AP abdominal radiograph uh, from the emergency room with a patient with um, abdominal pain. And in this case, you can see a large dilated loop of bowel in the upper abdomen. Again, this has an inverted U shape uh, with the lower portions of the bowel arising from the pelvis that suggests this may represent sigmoid colon. And if this is sigmoid colon, this is what is termed the northern exposure sign with loops of sigmoid colon extending above the expected location of the transverse colon and actually lying just below the diaphragm. So I'll take a minute to talk about uh, com computed tomography findings of sigmoid volvulus. Similar to the radiographs, you'll see dilatation of the sigmoid colon the more specific findings that you can see on computed tomography that allow you to make the diagnosis of volvulus include a whirl sign where you will see twisting of the mesentery and, vessel, and vessels about the sigmoid colon. You will see the two loops of bowel cross and you will have a abrupt pointed tapering of the crossing loops of small bowel, what is termed the bird beak sign that indicates an abrupt luminal narrowing. This is a coronal 
CT scan of a patient with a sigmoid volvulus. In the central lower aspect of this coronal image, you can see a dilated loop of sigmoid colon, very similar to what we have seen on the abdominal radiographs. What I have presented here is a 3D reconstruction from this CT scan that I think allows you to better visualize the twisting and beaking of the sigmoid colon. These images with the arrows show the two areas of beaking or abrupt narrowing of the sigmoid colon as the two adjacent loops cross one another. You can also see the folding of the lumen compatible with the twisting of the lumen of the sigmoid colon. Here is a, a coronal image further posteriorly in this patient and you can see centrally in the lower abdomen crossing mesenteric vessels and twisting of the small bowel, or excuse me, colonic mesentery as indicated by the arrow. This is a different patient, an axial CT scan showing dilated loop of bowel in the upper uh, aspect of the image. You can see there is an air fluid level within this loop of small bowel, continuing the imaging further distally and following that loop of bowel in the left mid abdomen, there is a dilated loop of bowel that abruptly, abruptly tapers with a bird beak sign seen towards the left on the uh, image, the patient's right, as indicated here by the arrow. And this represents the site of obstruction as this loop of sigmoid colon passes across an, a, the twisted segment of sigmoid colon. Now we'll talk about another typical colon volvulus, sequel volvulus. As might be expected, these patients present with a dilated cecum. The long axis of the cecum is often directed towards the left upper quadrant of the abdomen rather than being directed normally towards the right lower quadrant when it's in an anatomic position. The cecum often measures greater than nine centimeters on conventional radiograph you can appreciate the hostile fold pattern of normal colon to help differentiate this from dilated small bowel. Here is a coronal radiograph of a patient from the emergency room. Centrally, there is a dilated loop of bowel. You can see radio dense hostile folds present indicating that this is colon and the end of this loop of bowel is directed superiorly and appears to arise from the pelvis rather than being directed inferiorly suggesting the possibility of a volvulus. Again while as with the sigmoid volvulus, while abdominal radiographs may suggest a diagnosis, computed tomography is usually performed for confirmation. Again, see, you will see dilatation of the cecum, a similar whirl sign this time associated with the cecum rather than the sigmoid colon with twisting of the mesentery vessels. You will see crossing of loops of bowel, and again, you will see an abrupt transition where the small bowel is twisted with a bird beak sign. This is a coronal CT scan in a patient from the emergency room with a sequel volvulus. 
you can see a dilated loop of cecum in the left upper quadrant rather than the normal expected location of the right lower quadrant. The cecum is dilated. And then in the right lower quadrant, you can see a swirl of vascular structures that represent a twisting of the mesentery in the right lower quadrant adjacent to the cecum, and this is uh, the whirl sign. Another less common type of cecal volvulus is termed the cecal vascule. Again, this is an uncommon type of cecal volvulus in which the cecum folds up over itself into the antro, into an anteromedial location in contrast to the more common type of volvulus. There is no twisting component. This is often an intermittent finding and is also can be termed a mobile cecum and cause intermittent obstruction. This is a sagittal image from a CT scan in a patient with a cecal vascule. There is a dilated loop of sigmoid colon in the anterior aspect of the abdomen projecting towards the right upper quadrant adjacent to the gallbladder as indicated by the arrow. This cecum is mildly dilated but there is no twisting as is typically seen with a cecal volvulus.